Got it. Hello, hi everyone, and uh, good morning to all our brothers and sisters. Welcome to our CDC Sunday celebration. It's a joy to have everyone join us. And uh, as always, it is our custom to want to go around and say hello because we haven't seen each other in one week time. And uh, if you want to on your camera, you know, you can on your camera as well. You can sing along with us and clap along with us as we worship the Lord together. Uh, we are your worship leaders for today, Brandon and my wife, Phoebe. And uh, before we begin, I think it's uh, apt that we uh, open with a word of prayer. And uh, let's just commit this time to the Lord, shall we? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we just want to thank you for this wonderful Sunday morning, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can still come together to praise and worship your name and to also uh, listen to your word and receive spiritual food, Lord, uh, week in and week out, Lord. Truly, Lord Jesus, Sunday morning is a time that we look forward to as we uh, meet our brothers and sisters, Lord, meet our friends again, meet our CDC family, Lord. It's a joy, Lord, to see everyone. And uh, even as we uh, worship you this morning. We just want to pray and ask for your Holy Spirit's presence to be here with us. We pray for ourselves as worship leaders as well, Lord Jesus, that uh, your Holy Spirit will fall upon us, Lord, and also will fall upon each and every member of our church, Lord. So we commit the congregation into your hands, Lord, not just now, but also for later, Lord Jesus, when they receive the word, Lord, that they open their hearts and they open their ears, Lord, uh, to receive what you have prepared for them through Pastor Chin, Lord. Mm -hmm. So we want to thank you for this time, Lord. We uh, ask for your holy presence to be here with us and uh, bless our time of singing and worship together. We pray and ask all this in Jesus' most precious name and all God's people say, Amen. 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 So once again, good morning, everyone. And uh, let's start with our first song and proclaim that uh, one way, right? Jesus are one way. Here we go. Let's clap along if you know the song as well. And we will start the screen sharing as well. Here we go. I put you first. 
Brandon, Brandon, your mic a bit soft, lah, Brandon. Brandon very soft lah. Brandon, the sound very soft. Uh, can't really hear it now. The guitar sound also fading. Your heart. 
my voice and sing, I worship you, Jesus. I worship you. I worship you. The reason I live is to worship you. I worship you. It's to worship. Yes, Lord Jesus, we worship you in this place, Lord. Oh, yes, God, we worship you, Lord. We exalt you in high, Lord Jesus. We exalt you, Lord Jesus, and we worship you. One spirit, one voice, Lord Jesus. Oh, we lift our voice and sing, Lord. We worship you in this place. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are here. We thank you, sweet Holy Spirit, that your presence is so strong here with us, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that you are so loving, Lord Jesus. And Lord, you love us so much, Lord. From the beginning to the end, Lord, you have never left nor forsaken us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Sorry, Brandon, the sound is a bit off. Huh? Can't hear Phoebe singing. Very soft, can't hear.
things we cannot do as human lord but you are powerful lord Amen. you are bigger than so many things lord jesus and we we just want to look to you we just want to raise our voice and worship you and worship you lord thank you father for this amazing time of worship that we are reminded once again that you are powerful that god you reign and God, you are the king of Malaysia, Lord. You are the king of Malaysia, Lord. And you are in control, Lord. And Lord Jesus, we want to continue to trust in you. Continue to trust in yes, you, Lord. Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Holy Spirit, we welcome you to work among us, Lord. To speak to our hearts, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you bless and anoint Pastor Chin when he's preaching today, Lord, that you'll be like a double-edged sword that will pierce through people's heart and that we will receive, Lord, and we will receive and that it will change, Lord. Our walk with you will change as well, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Is it? I can't hear. I can't hear very clearly. Is it over to me now? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Pastor Chin, where's my slides? <laughs> hey, uh, the announcement slides. Uh, huh? Announcement slide. Prayer slide, right? Yes. The, the prayer, prayer slide. slide. Yeah. 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 It's the same. It's the same. Yeah. I put them all together. Great. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed, indeed, there is power in the name of Jesus. In the, as what uh, the song has said just now, indeed, there is power in the name of Jesus. And today, really, we are going through a very unprecedented time where we never seen things happening like this before. Yeah, a place that has caused our the whole world to tremble, including our country. COVID nineteen. And today, it's not the end of the plague yet. We are still in the midst of the storm. And worse, in our country, we are seeing within three years, a change of government is very turbulent. But God's word is the same for us. And today, I'm very, very happy to read again. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, which is the verse that I want to share with you all says that if my people who are called by my name, what we need to do, humble themselves. And then what we have to do, pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. 
You see, this this is something that that that's how many years ago? It's not last year. It's not three years ago. It's two thousand years ago. God already knew that this world is going to face tremendous problems, and all He wants us to do is to turn to Him, humble ourselves, commit ourselves, pray, and seek His face, and He will hear us. That's what He says. He will hear us from heaven and will forgive our sins and heal our land. So we have a very strong assurance from God that everything that we see in today will disappear one day. Yeah, will disappear one day because God is in control. All right, And for that, we want to commit our country in prayer this morning. Can I have a next slide, please? Yeah. Of course, on the on the top, you can see the three pictures there. Pray for Malaysia. Uh, and then on the right, you'll see the seven days, which starting next week. Yes, it's CDC. Yeah. We're starting next week, starting on 23rd of August to 29th of August. Seven days of prayer. Yeah. These are my prayer points today as, uh, yeah, uh, as I pray afterwards. Huh? Pray that Malaysia, by God's grace, will develop into an advanced economy and stable and harmonious democracy. Yeah, that we all have enjoy equal rights and everything. Yeah, but this is possible. Pray, we gotta pray. Yeah, start praying and pray that the new government will generally seek to uphold the principle of equal citizenship rights. Yeah, we just got a new government, new prime minister, yet to see the 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 the, the, the government be set up. But we want to pray that this new government will truly seek what they want to do. Of course, we continue to pray for our COVID nine cases in Malaysia. It's not going down, it's going up. Uh, pray for healthcare frontliners. Again, these people are really putting their, 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 their life on the line, so to speak, working nonstop to provide treatment and care for the sick. Yeah, And most of all, pray that people will seek God at this time. Things may seem difficult, hopeless, but they can seek God. Pray that God will continue to bless our nation with strong and steady growth of national economy so that our citizens will be blessed. There are many who are suffering now through this period of pandemic because no business, no money, and no money, their life are really affected. So let's commit them to God, yeah? Come, let's pray. Let's pray together and uh, be united as a church, yeah? Father, praise the almighty God, who is the great I am, and our hope and comfort through all circumstances. God, we come before your throne this morning as a nation today to thank you for our beautiful land. Thank you for our leaders and everyone that you have placed in this country. Lord, let your will be done in this nation as it is in heaven. May the people that are in leadership run this country according to your will. May, treat, may we treat each other according to your word and teaching. When we stray away from you, God, forgive us and show us the right path to go. Pray for our pastors, church leaders, and families that God's anointing spirit be upon them, that their minds and hearts are always refreshed through the study of God's words and prayer. Pray that God's guidance and blessing to be upon all our families' members represented, that we continue to be faithful and obedient to God's plan for us. May the Lord's rich, riches, rich blessings to be upon each one of us as we continue to enjoy good health and peace of God. We want to uphold in prayer for the authorities to manage effectively through this phase one and phase two lockdown that have gone into many months marked by new variants and mutations of the virus. Let us continue to pray for more recoveries and as infections remain high and concerns of, the, of under reporting increase. Pray that God is, is in his mercy will give us relief, stop this plague from advancing and curb the mutation of virus and heal our land. We thank God for our frontliners 
and continue to pray for their protection from fatigue, discouragement, and infection as public and private hospitals across the nations are operating at breaking points. Thank God that the vaccination program is now moving faster and gaining increased numbers of people vaccinated. Pray for all to overcome vaccine hesitation and do our public duty to live out the kingdom mandate, that is to love thy neighbours. I need to remember God's word that says, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, uh, thank, thank you, uh, Elder King Kiang, for the prayer, and thank you, Brandon and Phoebe, for the worship as well. Although there are some hiccup pertaining to the IT, but nevertheless, we pray together unto the Lord and worship the Lord uh, together as well. So, even as we worship the Lord in songs this morning, I also worship the Lord in prayer. Let us also worship the Lord in giving us customs. Our next, uh, you can you please put on the, the, the slides for the announcement? Yeah, the first slide here. Yeah. Yes, it's time for us also to give thanks unto the Lord, also to worship Him through our offerings. Uh, the bank account is on the screen. As you feel led by the Lord, do give freely unto, uh, to the church. And also, at the same time, pray for wisdom to give to the church leadership to disperse the funds for the furtherance of God's kingdom and for the benefit of those who are in need at this moment. If you have any inquiries, please email to our treasurer, our brother Binkit, whose email is on the screen as well. Yeah. The next announcement. Yeah. Yes, CDC has got Kids Club. This is catering to children who are in a primary school. We want to thank God for our sister forming and her team who work tirelessly uh, every month yeah, to get the things going. And uh, we have a monthly Zoom assembly from 9.50 a.m to 10 a.m. on the third Sunday of the month. But weekly, there's an online one-to-one -one mentoring by the various teachers as they talk to the teachers as well as to the students. Yeah, home Bible study lesson video and notes of parents and teachers will be given out. And the teachers and principals are based on the Christian Bible. And each club members, especially the kids, huh, the children, will get a workbook and also awards. Now, the whole objective of this kids club, of the things that our sister forming and team uh, are doing is actually to cultivate good friendships yeah, among the children as well as between parents and children as well too and more importantly with God himself yeah and it, and, and we want to encourage the church to also reach out to your friends who are young children in a primary school yeah to ask them yeah to join our kids club uh, program for further information you can ask us uh contact our sister for me whose email address as well as the phone number is on the screen. Next slide, please. Yes, our prayer meeting. Yeah, every Sunday for, uh, at 9.15 a.m., we will have a prayer meeting. The first Sunday of the month, we have a united prayer meeting, and the subsequent Sundays, we have a pre-service prayer meeting. Come and join us together. Everyone has to join us to pray for our nations, especially at this time. Yeah, not only a time of pandemic, but also uh, uh, we have a new prime minister that the Lord will also be with us even with this new government that we form. And may I encourage every one of us to come and pray together even as our elder King has quoted from 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, say, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then will I, turn, uh, then will, uh, will I hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. Yeah, that is a, that is a, dimension of how God will answer our prayer when we come together as a church to pray. So let us continue to come together every Sunday morning to pray together as a church. Next slide, please. Now, talking about prayer, yeah, in conjunction with the NECF 40 days fast and pray, yeah, as a church, we want to implement this CDC 7 days of prayer drive starting tomorrow until next Sunday. Yeah, it'll be every day. And every day is said in the sense that different groups will be praying 
uh, together. Not all the, the whole chain play together, but different groups will play together. And uh, it is from okay, Monday to Tuesday will be the intercessors. From Wednesday to Saturday night will be the CGs. Each individual CGs will meet together. There will be no study for that week. The CG was meet to uh, meet to pray only. And the format will be worship, prayer, and the word. And I will be there to facilitate the prayer session. And the purpose of this whole prayer drive is to help us as a church to really come together to pray and to make prayer a lifestyle. And moving towards praying as a, 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 the church praying as a house of prayer. And the focus for this one week itself is to pray for from victory. The victory that God's given to us, yeah, based on God's word and based on God's and worship unto Him. Yeah. So let us come together and pray for this Sunday. I would rather say uh, this, this one week itself. And uh, as, as mentioned earlier, that the CG time studies, most people will come. But when it comes to prayer time, uh, you find that many may not turn up for prayer. Yeah. But let us not think prayer is just uh, an event. Prayer is a relationship. Prayer is coming to support one another before the Lord. Prayer is a tool or instrument that God has given to us to change lives to be agent of change. So let us take these seven days of prayer seriously. Come together and pray. Yeah. And worship the Lord together. Listen to the word of the Lord together and pray together. Yeah. Shall we go to the Lord in prayer before we uh, go into a time of sermon? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for this time that we're able to look to you. We thank you, Lord, for the, the freedom to worship you even as uh, Brother Brandon and Sister Phoebe had led us in a time of worship, that indeed you are the God who is beyond comparisons. And we want to thank you also for the prayer that can, 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 can offer to you, even as the other King Kim has offered to you on behalf of the church. And we thank you also for the privilege of given to you to worship in giving unto you the substance that came to us, a portion of your goodness and mercy to us that we give back to you. We pray for wisdom to be given to the church leadership to disperse these funds to those who are in need and for the glory of your name. And even for the, this coming week, we ask and pray that your Holy Spirit will lead and guide us to pray together as a church, even as we come together in different groups in the, on different days to pray together, to, 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 to seek your face. And even as we seek your face together, may you speak to us, may you draw us to you and build us up to be men and women of your heart that we will pray from the position of victory that we have in you, O Lord Jesus. Father, even as we continue to look into your word in the rest of the worship service this morning, we ask and pray that you continue to be with us. Speak to us through your word, that may you anoint my lips to speak forth your word, and may you open our ears to hear, our eyes to see, our minds to understand, our hearts to receive your word, and that, Lord, we will grow to be men and women after your heart. We thank you and praise you. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Okay, this morning, uh, what we will do is that we have, we will go into a new series. Yeah, a new series that we will be starting uh, this uh, Sunday this morning is based on the book of Nehemiah. Yeah. As we all know that we are living in challenging times. Yeah, the current unabated COVID-19 pandemic has affected numerous lives and changed the way we live. We all have experienced this, yeah. And we do not know how long more this pandemic will last. Yes, indeed, we are faithful that we are grateful that the vaccination process in Malaysia has actually speeded up and more than 30 million people have been checked with either one or two doses. And, but the daily cases, the daily active cases or new cases are still very high. 20 over 1,000 for the past one week. And the death rate is still, still at three figures. Many people have, have lost their life. In view of the situation that we are in at the moment, with the pandemic, as well as with the new government, how do we move forward as individuals and as a church? How do we move forward as God's people? We want to thank God that as God's people, we don't need to be despair or discouraged. Because God has meant us to be overcomers in all circumstances. As we read God's word, we find God wants us to be overcomers in all circumstances. And Paul says in Romans chapter 8, verse 32, that we are more than conquerors to him who loves us. 
Yeah, although there are external and internal and personal challenges that we may have to grapple with, He has given us the resources to rise above all circumstances, all above, above all adversities. So the question we need to ask ourselves is that, yes, if God has given us all those resources, how do we overcome them? How do we move forward and accomplish what God has placed in our hands? How can we utilize these resources? Yeah, how do we face these challenges and overcome them, overcome them and sustain the future that God has given to us daily? In order for us to do all these things, as I mentioned, that we will go into the book of Nehemiah. Because the book of Nehemiah address these things which I mentioned to you. Our focus on the book of Nehemiah is actually building together in challenging times. Building together in challenging times. The next slide, please. Yeah, the book of Nehemiah can be divided into two parts. Yeah, Nehemiah chapter 1 to 6 is talking about building together as, a, as God's people. And Nehemiah chapter 7 to 13 talks about renewing together as God's people before God's sight. Yeah. So in, in the first part, we talk about building together is when we look at prayer, planning, working together, overcoming internal and external and personal tracks. In the second part from Nehemiah chapter 7 onwards, we talk about the importance of worship, Godliness, commitments, God's word, confession and rededication, and living as a renewed community and also guarding the heritage that God has given to us. And this morning, we shall begin with building together the first part with the title, Prayer. The text is taken from Nehemiah chapter 1, verses, uh, chapter 1, verses 1. Uh, yeah. yeah, can you go to the text? Yeah, the text. Yeah, Nehemiah chapter 1, verses 1. I'd rather say, yeah, all right, yeah, just, just leave it there. Yeah, based on Nehemiah chapter 1, verses 1, chapter 1, verses, verse 1 to chapter 2, verse, verse 10. Now, just to give a background to the book of Nehemiah. Yeah, when God redeemed the people of Israel from the bondage of slavery in Egypt and brought them out of Egypt, he made a covenant with them to make them his people and he their God. He then brought them into the land of Canaan, gave them that land and made them into a nation. That nation was firmly established under King David and Jerusalem was made the capital of the nation. And the nation prospered under King Solomon and it, it was during that time that God's temple was built. However, after King Solomon's reign, something happened. The nation split into two kingdoms yeah, due to inter-tribal conflicts, one in the north and one in the south. The southern kingdom was known as Judah. The northern kingdom was known as Israel. Yeah. Uh, the Judah consists of two tribes, Judah and Benjamin. And the northern kingdom, Israel, consists of ten tribes. Yeah. And each kingdom has their own kings. Now, as the covenant God of the uh, people of God, and even though they were split into two kingdoms, they were required to keep God's law yeah, as obedient unto God and worship in Jerusalem every year. Although there were kings who obeyed God, there were many kings who disobeyed him. And also they led the citizens of Israel and Judah to sin against God. And during the times of disobedience, God sent prophets to warn them that unless they repent, God would send judgment upon them. However, they refused to listen. Neither do they want to repent. Finally, God sent judgment on them. God allowed the Assyrian army to conquer Israel, the northern kingdom, in 722, 721 BC, and deported the whole population to Assyria. You can read that in 2 Kings chapter 17. Now, the southern kingdom, Judah, was also invaded by Babylonians in 605 BC, and some of the people were deported to Babylon. The king of Judah had to pay tribute to Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon at that time. But later on, the king of Judah rebelled. But the Babylonian managed to capture and destroy the city of Jerusalem, burn the temple of God, broke down the walls of Jerusalem, and exiled the whole people of Judah to Babylon, leaving only the poor of the poorest behind in Jerusalem and the surrounding area. You can read that in 2 Kings 25 and 2 Chronicles chapter 36. All this happened in 587 and 586 BC. Now, before Judah fell to the Babylonians, the prophet Jeremiah prophesied that after 70 years of their exile, God would bring them back to Jerusalem 
and they will begin anew. You can read that in Jeremiah. The text is on the screen. This actually happened when the Persian came to power. The Persian army invaded Babylon in 539 BC and took over the whole Babylonian Empire. And the Persian kings at that time practiced the policy of allowing the nations that are subjected to them to worship their own gods as long as they pray for the welfare of the king and the royal families. In the same year, <coughs> when Persia invaded and, and took over the Babylonian Empire in 539 BC, King Cyrus of Persia decreed that Israel could return to Jerusalem to build their temple. Yeah, in 2 Chronicles 36, it's still there. About 50,000 Jews returned to Jerusalem at the time under the leadership of Jeroboam. And the temple was rebuilt in 5016 BC. You can read the whole account in the book of Ezra. And while they were still trying to build the temple itself, yeah, they were facing opposition. But with the prophecy of Haggai and Zechariah, they managed to complete the temple in okay, 516 BC. And although the temple was completed, the wall of Jerusalem still remained destroyed, still remained in ruin, not rebuilt, until 445 BC when Nehemiah came into the picture. Yeah. That is the little background of the book of Nehemiah. Now let's just get into the book of Nehemiah. Yeah. Before we read the text, let's just wonder for, I want to give us two or three questions. Let's just remember these three questions as we go into the book of Nehemiah. How do you feel when you first receive news that your family members are in some form of trouble in another country? How do you feel when you first receive news, for example, that your family members are in some form of trouble in another country or your loved ones? And you find that there's no way of going to them, especially this time of pandemic. Travel is an issue because unless we are vaccinated and the other country at, uh, accept our, uh, the vaccination certificate of Malaysia, yeah, there can be no way that we can travel to give them help. And what is the first thing that you would do? What will be the first response? How do you feel? And what else will you do after your first response? All this you will see in Nehemiah chapter 1, verses 1 to chapter 2, verse 10. Now I shall read from the ESV. The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hekeliah, now it happened in the month of Kishlet. In the 20th year, as I was in the Susa, the capital, that Hanani, one of my brothers, came with certain men from Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews who escaped, who, who had survived the exile and concerning Jerusalem. And they said to me, The remnant there in the province who have survived the exile is in great trouble and shame. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down, and its gates are destroyed by fire. As soon as I heard these words, I sat down and wept and mourned for days, and I continued fasting and praying before the God of heaven. And I said, O Lord, God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments. Let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer of your servants that I now pray before you day and night for the people of Israel, your servants, confessing the sins of the people of Israel, which we have sinned against you. Even I and my father's house have sinned. We have, we have acted corruptly against you and have not kept the commandments, the statutes, and the rules that you commanded your servant Moses. Remember the word that you commanded your servant Moses, saying, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the peoples. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, though your outcasts are in the outermost parts of heaven, from there I will gather them and bring them to the place that I chosen, to make my name dwell there. They are your servants and your people, whom you have redeemed by your great power and by your strong hand. O oh Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servants and to the prayer of your servants who delight to fear your name and give success to your servants today and grant him mercy in the sight of this man. Now I am a cup bearer to the king. Chapter 2 In the month of his son, in the twentieth year of King Artaxerxes, when wine was before him, I took up the wine and gave it to the king. Now I had not been sad in his presence. And the king said to me, Why is your face sad, seeing you are not sick? This is nothing but sadness of the heart. Then I was very much afraid. 
I said to the king, Let the king live forever. Why should not my feast be set when the city, the place my father's graves, lies in ruins, and its gates have been destroyed by fire? Then the king said to me, What are you requesting? So I prayed to the God of heaven, and I said to the king, If it pleases the king, and if your servants have found favor in your sight, that you send your send me to Judah, to the city of my father's grave, that I may rebuild it. And the king said to me, the queen sitting beside him, How long will you be gone? And when will you return? So it pleased the king to send me when I had given him a time. And I said to the king, If it pleases the king, let letters be given to me to the governors of the province beyond the river, that they may let me pass through until I came to Judah. And a letter to Asaph, the keeper of the king's forest, that he may give me timber to make beans for the gates of the fortress of the temple, and for the wall of the city, and for the house that I shall occupy. And the king granted me what I asked, for the good hand of the Lord was upon me. Then I came to the governor of the province of beyond the river and gave them the king's letters. Now the king had sent me with officers of army and horsemen. But when Sambala, the Horonite, and Tobiah, the Ammonite, seven Curtis, it displeased them greatly that some had come to seek the welfare of the people of Israel. Who was Nehemiah? His father's name was Hekeliah, but there is no other record in the Bible about his father except here. Nehemiah lived in Susa, the capital city of the Persian Empire, and verse 11 tells us that he was a cupbearer of the Persian king. Now, a cupbearer in those days was a high-ranking officer of the king, and his duty was to serve the drinks at the royal table. His main role was to ensure that the king was not poisoned by the drink that he, he took. He was, as a cupbearer, he was also required to swallow some of the, some of the drink before he served it to the king to ensure that the drink is free from poison. And as a cupbearer to the king, Nehemiah was a man trusted by the king. And Nehemiah, who lived in the city of Susa, lived in comfort because of his position. And as we read as well too in his first two chapters, that Nehemiah was also a man of prayer. Throughout, in fact, throughout the whole book, we will see that he prayed to God regularly and consistently. Now, this passage tells us something about his prayer. And there are three things that we can learn about Nehemiah's prayer in this passage. He's a man who cares. He's a man who prays. He's a man who takes risk. The man who cares. Even though Nehemiah was a man of influence and lived in the comfort in Susa, his heart was in Jerusalem about 1,287 kilometers away. Although he had never been to Jerusalem or met most of the people, people there, his heart was for the city because you know that the city was special to God. So when his brother Hanani came from Jerusalem, he wanted to know how the people and the city were doing. And then the news he received wasn't encouraging. Although the Jews had returned to Jerusalem in 539 BC, and now it's 445 BC, a span of 106 years, the city was still in ruin and not being rebuilt. The wall of Jerusalem and its gates remained destroyed and broken down. The people there were called random survivor, and they were in great trouble and shame. Because of the bad state of the city, the people were in bad state. Now, in the ancient world, the city without war would be in constant danger from enemies and attackers. The people had no defense and protection if the enemies or bandits attacked. Any valuable things could be stolen or destroyed by the enemies. The people lived in constant stress and anxiety, and progress would be slow, if not difficult, because there was no security. They never knew when they might be attacked. So when Nehemiah received the news, he knew the implication. 106 years since his people had returned and there was no progress in the city except the temples that was being rebuilt or and some houses probably. His reaction was great sadness. In verse 4 it says, he sat down and wept and mourned, not for an hour or a few hours or for a day, but for days. And his mourning was not merely sentimentalism that resigned to the thought that he could do nothing because Jerusalem was so far away. His mourning was accompanied with 
fasting and prayer. Verse 4 says, seek again, say, I, I continue fasting and praying before the God of heaven. He has faith in God. As God's, as God's people in CDC, are we concerned for God's people when they are in bad state? Or do we care just for ourselves, especially in this time of pandemic? Say, oh, there's no way that we can reach out to them. But how do we feel? Do we pray for them? When we heard some Christians we don't know have COVID-19, are we concerned for them? And do we pray for them that God will heal them and pray for the protection of family as well too? When we read the news that Afghanistan has fallen and requests have been made to pray for the believers in that country, do we pray for them? Even though we do not know them. Nehemiah have not been to Jerusalem. He, will, he could have been born in Babylon or in Persia during the time of the Babylonian, Babylonian and Persian Empire. But he is a person, he was a person who really cares for God's people. Like Nehemiah, a person who cares is a person who prays. In our prayer for them, how do we pray? That brings me to my next point. The man who prays in verses 5 to 11. In Nehemiah's prayer, he began with God. In verse 5, we see that he addressed God, O Lord, the capital L-O-R-D, or in Hebrew, Yahweh, signifying that he was addressing the God who had made a covenant with the people of, of Israel and the God that Israel belonged to, wherever they are, whether they are living in a city of suicide and comfort or they are far away in Jerusalem, living in fear and anxiety. And God's and Israel's God is not just another God, like all other gods that the nation worship in the Persian Empire. The Lord is the God of heaven, who is enthroned in heavens, who reigns in and from heavens above all other gods. And as Nehemiah addressed the covenant God of Israel, he went on to worship God in the attributes of God. In verse 5, he says, The great and awesome God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments. In his worship, Nehemiah acknowledged that God is all powerful and in control of all situations. The God who is full of splendor and glory. The God who is faithful to his word and covenants that he had made with the people of Israel, that they will never fail to experience his goodness, his enduring love, as long as they keep his commands. It is important for us as God's people yes. that in our prayer, we acknowledge and worship God. For worship is not just only in songs or reading the Psalms. Worship is also in the form of prayer. Because as we learn to worship God in our prayer for who it is, we will be reminded of who God is and what He requires of us and what He can do. And that will help us and inform the way that we pray. After his worship, Nehemiah went on to the confession of sins in verses 6 to 7. Not only did he confess the sins of his people, he identified himself with the sins of his people, saying, We have sinned against you. Even I and my father's house have sinned. And his confession of sins was not a general confession. The confession was specific. Nehemiah named the root cause of their sin. In verse 7, he said, We have acted very corruptly against you, and you have not kept the commandments. The root cause of our sin was simply being wanting their own ways. They are defiant against God and refused to obey God's word. Whenever we, we sin against God and come before the Lord in confession, do we name our sins specifically or repent of it? Or do we just say a general prayer, say, Oh Lord, please forgive my sin. Now, it is easy to say a general prayer of confession of sin. 
Because why? We are not confronting the sin by itself. We can just gloss it over. Because if we don't mention the specific sin that we have just committed, there's no way that we can deal with that particular sin and have victory over it. To really repent and to be victorious over that certain sin in our lives, we must face it squarely and willingly and ask God to forgive us for that specific sin and to give us the grace to overcome that particular sin. Then only can we have victory over that particular sin. Now, after the confession of specific sins, Nehemiah went on to appeal to God according to God's word. In one way, you can say that Nehemiah prayed the scriptures. And in verses 8 and 9, he reminded God of what God has already said in the Torah, in the book of Leviticus chapter 26, that although the people of Israel were scattered as a punishment for their sin, when the people of Israel repented and sought God's face and obeyed him, God will forgive them and get them back to, to Jerusalem, the place where God has chosen for his people to worship him. And Nehemiah went on to appeal to God's redeeming love in verse 10, reminding God of how he had redeemed Israel with great power from the land of Egypt to make them his people and his servants to worship and minister to him. And he ended by earnestly asking God to listen to his prayer and the prayers of the Israelites who prayed together with him to give him success as he planned to approach the king to request for help. In praying for the needs of others, especially when the need is great, it is important for us to learn how to pray the scriptures. Because in the scriptures of God, there are so many promises of God, and yet there are so many requirements that God has wanted us to do. So when you pray in accordance with the scripture, as our Lord Jesus said in, in, in John chapter 15, verse 7, he said, If you abide in me, and my word abide in you, ask whatever you will, and it shall be done for you. How do we how can we have God answer our prayer? Is to abide in God's word. How can we abide in God's word unless we know his word? And even as we know his word, we can use God's word to pray so that we know that our hearts are tuned to his will. And when our hearts are tuned to his will, we know that he will answer our prayer. It's so important to also share our needs with other believers in Christ, even as we pray, to involve them in our prayers. Why this is to share our burden as we carry the burden of God for, to God for solutions. Now, the action there, and it's important also to note that, that, that as a community of faith, as I mentioned earlier, as we pray together, the Lord will answer us as a community of faith. And action plans and prayer are not incompatible. There are times we need to be still and know that God is God. In Psalm 46, verse 10, as this is the theme of, him, of, of the NECF 40 days, fast and pray. But there are times we need to plan and take actions as we pray. However, we need to bring our plans to God, like Nehemiah. May he ask God to give him success before this man. Who is this man? Is the king. Why? Because he knew that success in his work as a minister of the king, depend on God and God alone. The covenant God, the worship of God, the confession of God, bring God's word, God's redeeming love, garnering other believers to pray, bringing plans to God. How Nehemiah could pray in this manner was because he knew his God. He knew that the God he worshipped is, is not like any other gods, but the God who is powerful and in control of all situations. Although his people were in bad state, nothing is beyond God's ability to help. Nehemiah was praying from the position of victory in God, in the God that he knew. He was praying from the victory that he knows that the promises that God said in his word. He knew that as he went to God in prayer, matter will be resolved. How do we pray for our country, for the people, for the government during this time of pandemic? How do we pray for Afghanistan and the believers who are there? How do we pray for ourselves and our church CDC 
in this time of uncertainty. Let us learn to pray from the position of victory like Nehemiah, because we have the great God, the God who is in control of all situations. We see God answered Nehemiah's prayer in chapter 2. That brings me to my last point. The man who takes risk, chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. Nehemiah knew that for him to bring his request to the Persian king, Artaxerxes, will be a sensitive matter because the king might think that Nehemiah was trying to plan a rebellion. So he waited for God to open the door. Nehemiah, Nehemiah waited. Not only waited, he also persevered in prayer for four months before God answered his prayer. Now you notice that in verse 1 of chapter 1, Nehemiah mentioned that in the month of Chishleh. And then in chapter 2, verse 1, he said that it was in the month of Nisan that he was serving the king with wine. So from Tishlag, which is November or December, to Nisan, which is March or April, is a period of four months. So during those times, Nehemiah was praying and pursuing in prayer and waited for the Lord to open the door. Do we keep up, especially in times of difficulties? Especially we see that our loved ones were stuck in somewhere having some issues and we cannot reach them. And we pray and praise that the Lord seems doesn't, doesn't seem to answer. Do we give up? To Nehemiah, no. He persevered on, for he knew that a time will come that God will open the door for him to, 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 to do the things that need to, need to be done. And God answered that prayer by the time he met uh, in, in the month of Nisan when he served the king. Now, Nehemiah in serving the king had not been set before the king. No one serving the king was to display a sad face, for that would mean death penalty. However, Nehemiah could no longer hide his sorrow for his people because the burden was just too great. So his sadness was shown on his face. The king noticed it because the king knew Nehemiah well enough as his trusted officer, although he may be from, of another race. Since Nehemiah wasn't physically sick, the king, as a discerning king, knew that there must be something charming Nehemiah mentally and emotionally. Nehemiah was afraid when the king asked him because it could mean death penalty for him. However, Nehemiah decided to trust God, seeing that this could be the door that God had opened for him to ask the king for help. He was willing to take the risk and leave the consequences into God's hand. He told the king honestly about the burden in his heart not knowing what the outcome would be. Many Christians know the right things to do, but fail to do it. Why? Because they are afraid of the consequences, especially when it involves some risk to their lives. For example, some Christians, they do not want to share the gospel because they are afraid of rejection or hostility by their listeners. Some people do not bother to help others because they don't want to be inconvenienced or experience discomfort. And some people do not want to help those with COVID-19. Although they have no way to get to the hospital or no way to contact the ambulance because they are afraid of getting the COVID-19. Yes, to help these people, we must exercise wisdom. But yet at the same time, how do we exercise compassion and love? When we pray to God to do the right thing, we must also to trust God regarding all our consequences, like me, me, my head. Yes, there will be some risk, but we need to trust God to take care of the risk for us. When Nehemiah had told the king about the burden in his heart and saw that the king was willing to consider his request, Nehemiah quickly prayed a short prayer to God. Nehemiah brought God into his conversation with the king. Not that Nehemiah started to talk about God to the king, but Nehemiah consulted God on how to answer the king in an appropriate manner. And that's, that's what happened. Before Nehemiah made his request, he, he expressed his respect and his recognition that the king's wishes must have priority. That's why he said in verse 5, if it pleases the king and if your servant has found favor in your sight, meaning if the king would allow and even if the king refused his request, he will obey. Know that things are 
beyond his hand. And then he presented to the king what he would like to do for his own country. That is to build the city. Do you bring God into your studies if you are a student? Do you bring God into your work if you are in the marketplace? Do you bring God into your social interaction as you interact with your friends, your social circle? Do you bring God into the family as you take care of your family? As God's people, God is interested in our affairs. As our Lord just said in Matthew, that even our hands are numbered. If God knows the number of hair that we have and take detailed interest in our lives, all the more we should go to God with all the things that we have and talk to God in a daily affair of our lives. And that is what it means to make prayer our lifestyle. I remember in my student days and my working days is that I was encouraged to speak to God, especially during an exam. When I come to a difficult question, I was told beforehand, talk to God how to solve this problem. And many of the times as I ask God for wisdom, the Lord gave me the wisdom to solve the problems yeah, in the papers. And the same thing at work as well too. When I face difficulty, I talk to God, say, Lord, how do I do it right now? I go talk to this client at the moment. How do I go about doing it? And even in my mystery as well too. And it is important for us to make pray our lifestyles that we may experience God's goodness and grace in our lives. That we continue to pray from the victory position, a victorious position that we have in Christ. The king not only allowed Nehemiah to go to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem, the king also agreed to Nehemiah's request for travel permits for safe inter-promises travels, very familiar to us. We talk about interdiction transfer. Uh, uh, travel beneath the police permit, and also the letter of authority to instruct the king's forest people to provide timber for the rebuilding of Jerusalem. Nehemiah recognized all these permissions granted by the king as God's grace in answering his prayer. God is a good God. He more than answered Nehemiah's prayers. God also gave what Nehemiah did not ask the king. Something that Nehemiah needed to have safe journey and to accomplish God's mission for him in Jerusalem. God caused the king to voluntarily send an army along with Nehemiah to protect him from robbers during his journey. Not only that, but when Nehemiah was in Jerusalem, this army were, were to remain there to protect him and the Israelites during the rebuilding of the wall, as we see later on in, 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 the, in, the, in the subsequent chapters of Nehemiah. However, there are certain people, as Nehemiah Rich arrived in Jerusalem City, there are certain people, the two non Israelite officials, Sambala and Tobiah, they were not happy with Nehemiah's arrival to look into the welfare of the Israelites. Why is it so? We'll know more about it later as we look into the subsequent chapters of Nehemiah. But as we see how the Lord answers Nehemiah's prayer, and Nehemiah gives thanks to God, it's important for us like Nehemiah, to give glory to God whenever the prayer is answered. To give thanks to him privately. I also give thanks to him public as well to when the occasion permits. Also, we need to know so God knows our needs as we pray. Not only God will answer our prayers, but God may also provide for us what we did not ask of him because he, know, he knows that we need them. In conclusion, how do we pray even as we seek to pray to God in all circumstances, especially in times of challenging times, in times of uncertainties, in times of anxieties? Like me in my year, we need to have growth to have heart of compassion, who cares for the people that we know, for the Christians that we know, for the people around us as well, for the circumstances around us. For to really pray earnestly and pray effectively, it starts from us having a heart of caring and compassion. And we need to go to God to pray what he has for us, what we know of him in his scriptures, what we know of him, of his attribute, what we know of him that he requires from us, and what we know of the people around us that we pray in that intelligently. 
And we need to be people who also plan. While we pray, we need to also plan for action. For whenever time that the Lord will show us to take action, we need to take action as well. And God will give us the timing and we need to wait for his time to act. All in all, we need to be reminded that we have the great God, the God who is in control of all situation. And that is the reason why we can pray from the position of victory in Christ and Christ alone. So even as we journey on today forward, may I encourage you, brothers and sisters in Christ, to, re to, to remember that God has given us the privilege of coming before him. God has given us the resources to pray to him. And God has given us the position of victory even as we pray. And let us not be discouraged, but let us soldier on in faith and trust in God. For we are praying for position of victory in Christ. So for the next one week, yeah, even as we go into a season of CDC 7 days prayer drive, let us remember that when we pray, we are praying for a position of victory in Christ. As we come before the Lord to worship Him, as we come before the Lord to listen to His word, as we come to the Lord to seek His face, remember, our God is the powerful God who is in control of all situations. And we are there to pray, to pray from the position of victory in Christ. Shall we go to the Lord in prayer? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are a God who is with us. We praise and worship you that you are a God who is sovereign and powerful and in control of all situations, no matter how dark and difficult it may be, that nothing is beyond you. And we thank you, O Lord Jesus, that you have given us the privilege to be victorious in you. For you said in your word, Romans chapter 8, that we are more than conquerors to him who loves us. And we pray that you grant us your grace, Lord, knowing that we have the victory in you, that we come before you, Lord Jesus, we need not be despair or discouraged. Though we may feel, feel sad and, and desperate, but we know that we need not do so, O Lord Jesus, because in you there is victory. And teach us to pray like Nehemiah has prayed, O God, looking to you as the almighty God of heaven, the God who is great and powerful and mighty, the God who has given your word to guide us in our prayer, the God who wants us to come before you with in all our weaknesses and sins, in confessions and in repentance, and in doing so, we will experience your goodness and grace and mercy. The God who is beyond all comprehension will work out the things in your good time and helps us, Lord, to learn to perceive it on in our prayers, even though it may take some time before we hear the answers from you, we get the answers from you. Grant us your grace, O oh God, that we may be people who pray and persevere in prayer. And that helps us, Lord, to be constantly remember that in Christ, we have victory. In Christ, we are praying for a position of victory. We thank you and praise you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, our victorious God. Amen. Shall we rise for the benediction? Master. Yeah. Yes. Uh, shall we rise for, 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 for the benediction? Yeah. Okay. Even as we are listening to God's word from Nehemiah chapter 1 and 2, knowing that God will answer our prayers more than what we have requested. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face to you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. Go in peace. And for those who would like to be prayed for, there are two breakout rooms. Breakout room one is uh, my my, my wife, your pain, and myself, and break out room two is out of pocket as well as uh, Sister Bing Chu. Yeah, for those who want to be prayed for, you can contact our Sister Jenman. Yeah, Sister Jenman is CDC PJ2. You just inform her that you want to 
uh, either go to breakout room one or break, 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 breakout room two. God bless you. Yeah. Have a good week. Yeah. Great, thank Have you. a pleasant week. Yeah.